Once we've built an operating model, let's focus on projections now. Our task here is to reverse engineer the numbers that we've got in the first stage while making the historical operating model. So here we'll be trying to analyze the trend, to project this trend, and make the numbers uh, of various line items linked together. So let's start. Uh, let's start by trying to build the total customer base and its split of existing to new customers. So we see that the trend here is uh, obviously uh, upper, upper slowing. So um, so we uh, let's assume that uh, it continues to grow for the first uh, several years and then it it starts to gradually decline here. Uh, in these scenarios we'll try to keep the projections as simple as possible. Uh, so the churn is around 8, so let's assume it's 8, then 7, then 6, 5 and 5. Here you go. So our task here is to uh, first of all calculate the number of customers. Uh, it's relatively easy. So we take the previous number and we multiply it by 1 plus uh, customer growth rate minus churn this year and here you go. So this is our total number of customers. So now we need to figure out what how the dynamics works and how we can calculate existing and new customers. Uh, here we are taking our total customer base and multiply it by one minus um, one minus churn. Here you are uh, projecting. Then new customers would be one second. So it's just total number of customers minus existing customers. Here you are, those are our new customers. So um, now we see that the average trend here was around 5% growth. Uh, for the first few years, the company manages to uh, continue to grow its average customer value uh, per year, but then obviously it will be uh, on the downside trend and uh, will be gradually declining around the inflation number. So it will be around 3% in five years. Uh, all right, so let's calculate the actual numbers. So plus custom value growth rate. Here you go. Uh, all right. So now we're able to calculate our projections for the total revenue. It's simply total customers. Basically, we can just take the formula and copy it across. Yeah, it's now correct. So for the cost of goods sold, uh, we will be continuing to uh, project by category. So, uh, professional services growth rate. Let's assume that the company uh, manages to keep this rate uh, on this track and a bit declining, but uh, slowing down around 2%. So, 2%, then customer support, let's make it uh, minus 5%. So here minus four percent, uh, minus three percent, minus two percent, minus two percent, and let's take it minus two percent. And for hosting expenses, obviously the company has limited potential for for this uh, optimization, and obviously it they will rise in the future. Uh, so, okay, let's start with minus 3% and then 0, and then 1, 2, 2. 
Okay, so here we are of professional services. Is previous year one plus our projection growth rate and copy this across. So the same formula here and same formula here. So now here we just can simply copy the formula and calculate. Calculation is exactly the same here. Here you are. So let's move on to research and development. Let's assume the company just keeps it as it was, around 20%. So here's our assumption. And uh, now we have to multiply our assumption by the revenue number. Here we are. So now, as for sales and marketing, let's see what the trend was. Uh, for existing customers, uh, it was 3% growth. Let's imagine that the company is able to optimize its uh, its uh, budget and its sales and marketing efforts and its marketing team saying that uh, the growth rate is optimizing over the years. All right, so let's keep it 2%, uh, 1, 1, and finally it just stays the same. And growth uh, in uh, growth in actually uh, new customer marketing uh, will be around the same trajectory, but uh, obviously it will be much more than inflation. So for now we are using the same formula here, copying this across. Uh, and here, uh, calculating our total numbers. Okay, uh, general administrative. Let's assume that the trend will continue. And here it will be around 7%. Uh, again, in corporate finance, it usually takes us a lot of time to figure out what would be the most appropriate uh, projection assumptions of growth rate and the dynamics of various uh, financial numbers. But our, our exercise is just to build a model, so we will not concentrate on this on these uh, assumptions, but rather uh, focus on technicalities. So formula is exactly the same here. Here we are, and here it's just the variable expense as percentage of revenue. So we're simply multiplying by total revenue and uh, copying this across. Okay, so for other interest rate on cash, okay, let's assume that it's constant and effective tax, effective tax rate, let's keep it the same, around 20%. Uh, let's move on to our balance sheet assumptions. So, accounts receivable, uh, let's keep it simple and project 9%. Then 10 and just about 10. Uh, inventory just 20%. Uh, prepaid expenses 7, 6, and okay, let's keep 6. Uh, operating liabilities accounts payable. So uh, let's keep it 3% constantly. Um, 
accrued expenses. All right, let's keep it three as well. And deferred revenue. Okay. Let's assume that it's just exactly the same trend as we saw uh, in historical numbers. So now we are moving to our CAPEX and depreciation schedule. So in the first in the first part, we've modeled the historical numbers and left the space for our new modeling. Okay, let's continue what we have done. But first, we will have to do the assumptions on the uh, CAPEX spending. Uh, so let's assume that it is held constant at 3% of revenue. Uh, so um, now it's simple, multiplying by revenue to get the actual number. It's 106, 107, uh, projecting in the future. Here you go. Uh, all right, so annual growth rate just copying across. Pretty solid investment in capex. Uh, okay, so for now, let's move on and uh, continue our depreciation schedule. So transpose, um, taking these four numbers. Uh, and dividing by his whole life of PPME. Ah, sorry. So we'll have to uh, repeat it one more time. So, uh, control shift enter. Yeah, exactly what we need. Let's move on. Here we go. Transpose. Then divide by and OK, control after OK, then one more time, transpose, taking our annual capex, dividing by our useful uh, PPE life for each new category of PPE um, capex investments. So making it OK. Of uh, so it's two hundred. Uh, okay, so two hundred forty-nine now. Uh, okay, selecting a uh, space here. So transpose. Uh, dividing by the useful life of new PPND. Uh, control Shift Enter, uh, and just. To brief you on that. So you see that the count is seven. So for this year, the first the first investment in property plants and equipment that we've made on 2015 already depreciated. So here would be the blank. There would no but there would be nothing to depreciate here. Uh, and we will have to uh, focus on the other ones. So transpose. So transpose. God. Uh, taking except for the first payment, first uh, capital expenditure to make it exactly seven, then divided by seven years and uh, pressing control shift enter so here you go here is our annual depreciation perfect so total existing make just copying it across so uh, and let's move on to other uh, here are the simple changes uh, over the year, simple deltas. So uh, let's assume that it's just zero for all these numbers using the trends that we see here. All right, so next we will be modeling our income statement, balance sheet, and cash flow statement based on the projections that we've made here.
Let's create our income statement based on the assumptions that we've just made. So it should be simple since our historical numbers are linked directly to the assumptions sections that we were creating. So we can copy this across and uh, make the sanity check. So here you are, we can copy that across as well. Uh, fine. Then cost of goods sold. Same. Gross profit. Gross margin. Copying it again. It should be working. Very good. Then uh, operating expenses linked directly so we can copy it very well uh, total expenses total operating expenses all right so our operating income copying it same goes to EBIT EBITDA EBITDA margin so here you are copying it and pasting that's fine. Uh, one thing on interest, income, and expense. So we don't have the numbers for the cash balance yet. Uh, so it would be equal zero, but the formula is correct. So we only have the cash flow number for the beginning of uh, year 19. So it's calculated for the rest of the years, it's simply zero because our cash flow is zero. Once we are able to insert the correct cash balance, it will be calculated automatically. So our profit before tax, or copying it, uh, income tax, effective tax rate. So we can just copy that all here. Here you go. So let's move on to the balance sheet. Our task here would be a bit more complicated. So uh, cash flow statement. Cash and cash equivalents. It directly linked to cash flow statement. So we can copy that, but keep in mind that our cash flow statement is not modeled yet. So uh, this is the same number would be here. Okay, uh, as for accounts receivable, we will have to use our assumptions. So, uh, we were uh, driving accounts receivable as percentage of revenue. So, we're multiplying this percentage by revenue. So, total revenue, here you go. Copying across, uh, that's fine. So, moving next. Our prepaid expenses. Here you go. Moving to our assumption page. Uh, prepaid expenses as percentage of OPEX. Multiplying this percentage of uh, uh, to the OPEX. Here you go. So, it seems to be correct. 222, okay. Uh, inventory balance. So it's obviously as percentage of cost of goods sold. So taking our projected percentage, multiplying by cost of goods sold, and here we are, and copying this across. So it's simple formula, we can copy that. Here you go. So total assets. Total current assets. Let's move on to uh, non-current assets. So this one, property plus and equipment, is directly linked to our uh, pp and &E and depreciation schedule. So we can copy that. For long-term investments, we just adding the delta that we've made in our assumptions. So long-term investments per year, fine, it's zero. Copying it, are the non-current assets exactly the same? Taking the previous number and adjusting for the delta that we've assumed. So here you go, uh, increasing non-current assets. Here you are. So it's just being held constant. 
So uh, total non-current assets, it's just a formula, so we can copy that. Simple. Total, total assets, exactly the same. So uh, we are now going to current liabilities. Accounts payable are projected as percentage of operating expenses. So we multiply our percentage by operating expenses for this year and we getting our number. So copying it across. Uh, accrued expenses, totally similar to accounts payable. So taking our accrued expenses balance uh, assumption and multiplying it by total operating expenses. Here you go, projecting, then deferred revenue. Uh, we'll be obviously driving, driving it by revenue. So taking our deferred revenue assumption, multiplying it by total revenue. Here you are. Here are our numbers. So it's a formula for total current liabilities, copying it, uh, other non-current liabilities. Exactly the same that we've done with other non-current assets and long-term investments. So we're taking the previous number and adjusting it for the delta that we've assumed. So uh, it's zero here, so copying this across. Um, and copying this formula, here we are, total liabilities. It's a formula, copying it. So shareholders equity, exactly the same. We just take our assumption. New equity issued by the company. Copying that. Uh, retained earnings. It's a formula that is linking our previous retained earning balance to the new income, new net income number for each year. We're assuming here that the company pays no dividends, so we can copy that. Uh, shareholders equity just formula, and he, it is exactly the same. So, and we can keep our balance check. So, Obviously, our balance check is signaling that the balance sheet is not in balance. Uh, it's because our cash and cash equivalents items are not correct. Let's move on to the cash flow statement. Here are the simple formulas that we've inserted. So we, we're not making any assumptions on the cash flow statement because we're just creating it from our income statement and from our balance sheet. So we can just copy everything here and it should be fine. And let's check our balance sheet. And our sanity check tells us that everything is in balance. Perfect.